Hey, welcome back. In today's video, let's take a look at something called metaballs here in Blender. What are metaballs? So I'm a big uh, ZBrush user, and uh, when I play with it, it's actually reminding me of something like this. So in ZBrush, we have something called Z spheres, and uh, Z spheres are used to create uh, kind of base meshes that then you can turn into meshes and uh, start using those as kind of the the foundation for your character sculpting. In Blender, there's something really similar, uh, not really similar, but it sort of it reminds me of that in some way. So um, in here, let me select this box and press delete. If I press Shift A, um, in the uh, menu that comes up, you see there's something called Metaball. Now Metaball has all these cool different shapes, right? You can do a cube, you can do a capsule, a ball. Let's just grab a ball, for example, and uh, check this out. So if you wanted to see uh, how that works, all you need to do is just make another one. So if you say Shift D and start dragging it around, you can see that it's gonna create kind of this liquidy blobby connection between the two. If I click to park one, uh, you can see on the, on the right here, you have this green icon that shows up. If I go into it, um, it has a couple different settings for the meta ball, one of them being the resolution. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see that this by default is super low resolution, right? But if I uh, drag this down, let's say all the way to the left, and now if I grab this and move it around, you can see that it's, um, it's actually super cool. And it's kind of mesmerizing in some strange way. All right, so again, this could be used to create kind of a foundational, uh, you know, base meshes. So how does that work? Let's uh, jump into the side view. So if I start middle dragging and then press Alt, it's gonna snap me into a flat uh, kind of an orthographical view. And uh, from here, if I press Shift D, let's select this, let's press uh, Shift D and let's just drag a few out. So maybe I'll make another one. I can press S to scale this up. Maybe this could be the head, this could be the mouth or something like that. Um, I can do Shift D, let's just drag one more. This could be, I don't know, now I'm building a bird. Here's a neck, right? I can press S, make this a little bit smaller. I can add some uh, legs to this, right? So I could do Shift D and let me just do something like, you know, like this, I can press S. I'm starting to build something that looks like a blobby foundation of some sort. And honestly, it's a lot of fun and kind of cool, right? So if I wanted to make two legs, let me, uh, let's shift to the front view. I can grab both of these here and just move them over. Maybe this could be the leg. If I wanted to mirror this, I can right click on these and I can say um, set origin to 3D cursor. So that's going to move our uh, pivot. All right, now since we changed our pivot, I can do shift D and then right click to uh, put it back into place. Right click again and do mirror. Uh, let's do Y global. And now you can see that I just successfully kind of uh, mirrored over. Now I have uh, something that looks almost like some kind of a character of some sort. So this will be a cool way to build uh, base meshes. If I wanted to, I can also select all of these, right click, I can do convert to mesh. And if I click on convert to mesh, you can see that all of this kind of been infused together, right? And now if I wanted to see what the density looks like, uh, for example, I can always turn on my wireframe and you can see what that looks like, right? At this point, you can optimize it, you can sculpt on it, but a really clever way to quickly create kind of fun base meshes. So that would be one use of metaballs. But um, the other use is kind of fun and playful. Let me show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say uh, new. I'm not gonna save any of this. Let's start over, right? I'm gonna delete this guy. Press Shift A once again, and let's click. Uh, let's select another ball. Let's do Shift D, and let's just create a few of them, right? I'm gonna make a bunch of them. And let's do the same thing. I'm gonna go into my resolution, dial this down to make it nice and uh, clean looking. So another use for these would be kind of creating uh, unusual fun uh, animations. So let me show you what I mean. You can literally just take these and animate them moving around, right? And that's going to uh, create kind of a cool effect, right? So maybe, you know, you have a science fiction lab and in the monitor you want these kind of cells moving around or doing something unusual and blobby and, and you know, and you can also change uh, in here the influence threshold. Right now it's set to 0.6. If I dial this down, you can see how it's affecting uh, our mesh, right? You can make uh, them behave in different ways, right? Let's say I want to go maybe something like this. I go to one and now it's going to be, you know, even stickier, right? 
So now how do I animate this? To animate this, all you need to do, uh, the one thing you need to keep in mind when you are animating this or attempting to animate these, um, you don't want to go into the edit mode, right? So you want to stay in kind of the layout mode. If you go inside the edit mode, so if I press the tab key and you can see I switch to edit mode, and now if I do shift D and create another one of these, it's behaving exactly the same way. But now because I'm inside the edit mode, these two are kind of grouped together, right? These two green ones are grouped together, which also means I can't animate them because they're essentially kind of one piece, right? So if you go outside the edit mode, all of these are gonna be different. So now I have three, right? You can see what they are. And then these two are together because we created them inside the edit mode. So let me just go ahead and undo that. I don't want to do that. I wanna, again, stay in the layout kind of a external mode, right? So now what I can do is I can animate these um, and have them move around. Let's go into our timeline here. All right, so let's start animating these. Let's select one of these guys. I'm gonna turn on this auto keying uh, button here and let's just move this around. By moving it around, as soon as I release it because this auto key is on, you can see it first keyframe was created. And let's just create like a fun animation of 100 frames. I go to frame 100 and let's take this guy and let's move him maybe up here, right? We'll do something like this. And now I have two keys. Now, of course, if I press play, you can see that he's gonna be moving around, uh, which is great. If I want to have him maybe on frame 50, kind of go over here first, I could do that. Now I have kind of this fun little uh, loop. All right, so that's gonna be the first one. Let's go back to frame one. Let's grab this uh, next one, grab this one and do the same thing. I'm just gonna move it just a little bit to activate the first keyframe. I'm gonna go to keyframe 100 and let's just move this guy down here, okay? And now we should see both of them moving around. It's kind of creating this liquid uh, awesomeness. Let's go back here. Let's grab this middle one. And same thing, I'm just gonna move it just a little bit to activate the first keyframe. Let's go to frame 100. Let's just move this uh, somewhere else. We'll move it over here. And now if I press, uh, let's switch this timeline to 100. And now if I just press play, you should see all three of them kind of moving around in a blobby fashion. And it's, it's a lot of fun. If you take the time, you can create some uh, really cool effects with different sizes of these guys. And then of course you can also assign, um, you know, materials to this, right? We can always jump into uh, material. You can see currently there's none here. I'm gonna say new. And now I can change the color of these guys. Maybe I want them purple. Um, I can't see it, right? I need to change my shading mode. So maybe I want to some, do something like this. I can change the roughness um, and I can make them metallic or not, um, whatever you want. Let's just go maybe with something fun like blue. You can do uh, a little emission, a little glowing. So lots of cool stuff. And now if you press play, you uh, can quickly, you know, render out a cool little sequence. Um, of course, if you copy the keyframes from, let's say you want a loop, right? Let's say I want a loop of 150 frames. So let me switch this to 150. All right, so now we just have to copy keyframe one over to uh, keyframe 150 to have these uh, loop, right? So to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select, um, let's select, make sure we select uh, all three of these rings, right? You can see they all turn orange. Then I'm gonna select this key here I'm gonna press Shift D. I'm gonna start dragging this all the way to the right to 150 and just let it go, right? Now if I press play, you should see that this is uh, actually a perfect uh, loop that's gonna be uh, moving around uh, endlessly. And of course you can change the speed and uh, view of your camera, all of that stuff. And then you can do uh, some cool glowing uh, rendering and effects and all of that. You can even add uh, emitter so these could like jiggle and stuff, but. All right, so have fun experimenting. I just wanted to kind of play around and show you guys this fun uh, little tool in uh, Blender. All right, thank you for watching and I'll see you in our next video.